Oh, good morning, good evening, everyone. Dr. Mandel here with you. Uh, today we are going to talk about something really exciting, something that very few people really understand the words, but you're common with this condition. Uh, instead of just saying tight traps, aching traps, medically we will call it trapezius myalgia. Now, we are broadcasting live right now. We're streaming worldwide as notifications are going out, as chatters are coming in the chat room. But we'll move right through this real quick. Uh, we are looking at uh, trapezius myalgia. Now, this is a, a complex name, but it really isn't because myalgia means pain in the muscles. So if you're having trap spasming, trap pain, uh, you are having trapezius myalgia. And this is probably one of the largest, world largest epidemics today because I'm about to show you spending time texting and on the computer and looking down, which I'll explain more to you and I'll be able to show you some pictures. Uh, but you, I think you'll really find this quite interesting. Uh, if you look right here, we're looking at these trap muscles. Uh, these muscles. If you look right here, the origin insertion, just to give you some understanding about these muscles, we're looking uh, origin uh, underneath the base of the skull. Uh, if you put your hand in the back of your skull, you feel a bump back there. That's called your, your uh, occipital EOP or external occipital protuberance. Uh, well, it attaches right up in that area. So in other words, uh, if you follow it down, you can see it come down behind the neck and goes inside the shoulder blades and it kind of moves all the way down to the lower mid-back area. You can just look right there. So what is the action here? Well, the upper part of the trapezius is this, just shrugging our shoulders. The middle part of the trapezius is bringing our shoulder blades back together. Okay, It's kind of like retracting. And the Lower part of the trapezius actually depresses the shoulder blade, goes bring it, brings it down. But we're mainly concerned about the upper trap area, and this is the reason why. And I think you'll like this here. Uh, here is one of the most common reasons, uh, and there's a study I'm going to share with you, more commonly done in females and males. This is an amazing study because the exercises I'm going to teach you can correct a lot of this problem. And their proven study, these particular exercises I'm going to give you are the studies. So I'm not making this up. This is coming right from the study, right from the sources. And I'll explain that in just a second. But you can see the difference of the left skeleton versus the right skeleton. Let's take a little bit more in-depth picture here. Uh, you can see here the trap muscles, how his forward head posture is going on. You can see all that red is trap pretty much. And that muscle is just stretching. It's weakening. And the weight of the head takes us to our next thing here. Uh, many of my listeners already know this and have seen this in many of my videos, but it's my job to keep showing everyone this because this is so important. Head weighs 12 pounds. For every inch we bring the head forward, it's an additional 10 pounds. So that 32 pounds of weight is two inches forward. Three inches forward is 42 pounds of weight. And obviously, as you go more forward than that, uh, you're going to have more problems. We'll get deformation, and the, we're going to go through changes. Not only does forward head posture uh, affect that deformation in there, but it affects our TMJ because as your head goes forward, the back of the occipitalis, occipital muscles have to lift up. Otherwise, you're looking at the floor, and now we got problems under here, which can cause occipital neuralgia and pain over the head behind the eyes. So I want you to understand that a lot of symptoms that you're having here, or even tinnitus, or ringing in the ears, or vertigo, very potentially can come from back here. All right? So if we look here on this one right here, just about every human being does this. And you can just look at the difference. Normal 12 pounds, looking straight ahead at the, to the left, zero degrees. Uh, it's normal. You put normal stress on the discs, uh, and as you go 15 degrees, 27 pounds, 30 degrees, 40 pounds, 45 degrees, 49, 60 degrees, 60 pounds. Let me tell you, that is massive. Uh, and we're talking about, you know, subluxations. We're talking about problems in there. Uh, just doing this, you're going to have neurological issues. So remember the, the old phone, try to get it up, try to keep the ears in line with the shoulders. I like you to start really start doing those chin tucks. Go back to my channel. I have so many great videos on there. But this is real, real serious problems because all this is leading to this trapezius myalgia. If we come here, these are common areas where uh, most people have pain. 
That's a trap right there. Here's another side, okay? The other part of the trap. Now, those trap muscles are pretty big, as I showed you on the other chart. Uh, they can get pretty big. Here's another. Uh, I don't want to go there yet. But uh, what, basically, what you need to really be aware of, you need to really get up more often off that chair. You need to really start jutting the chin, chin in. Uh, if you're holding your arms up, remember, part of the action of the trap is lifting the arms upwards, so if you're holding your arms up, if you're a beautician, you cut here, you do nails, uh, or you look down like this, those trap muscles up here are constantly contracting. So you need to make sure you get your arms down. Now, most of these problems are definitely ergonomics, poor ergonomics. So the, the study that I want to show you uh, briefly, when we, when we go back here, regarding this forward, oh, I'm going to come back here. Hold on one second here. Okay. Uh, when we look at this forward head posture, what they've done, they've done a study of women. And uh, this study was uh, regarding uh, the 2008 January issue of the Arthritis Care and Research. And what they did here is they got three sets of people. One set, uh, a person, these people, these women did nothing. The second set is they got on a stationary bike three times a week for 20 minutes, rode the bike for three times a week or for 10 weeks. And the other study was these exercises. And what they found was the people who did nothing got no results. They had constant aching, constant pain, were on medication. The people who were riding the stationary bike, they noticed that they felt good after riding the bike, but the pain came back, most likely from endorphins. And the third study, the people who did these exercises, which I'm going to show you right now, are the people that got well. So I want to go over these, these simple exercises with you. I think you'll like them. Um, they're very simple. Uh, the first uh, exercise are the dumbbell shrugs. Now, very important, when you use dumbbells, or I want you to use light weights. You're basically going to stand uh, straight ahead like this young lady's on the left. And uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to shrug the shoulder up. And you, you'll, you'll hold it up just briefly and let it back down. But the key thing with this exercise is that when you let it down, relax it all the way down so you can stretch the, the uh the upper trap muscle. Very, very important. This will help strengthen the trap muscle. Uh, you want to do it slow, three sets, uh, eight to 12 repetitions, and you're going to do this three times a week every other day. Now, out of these, um, these different exercises, you're going to pick three of them each day. You can mix them around, but all you need to do is pick three of them, not all five. All right, now here is the upright rows. Very, very lightweight. I want you to use. I don't care if it's three pounds or two pounds. You can always build up on weight. But the key thing here is just like to the to the right, you can see always bringing it up. And uh, the palms are facing uh, your body uh, when you start. And then obviously, as you steadily lift it up, uh, you're going to just bring it up to a horizontal position just like that. Okay, but make sure you go light. Remember, 8 to 12 repetitions, three sets, three times a week. That's our goal right here. Here are uh, the one-arm rows. And uh, basically what we're doing here is we're just uh, bending your body forward. You're placing you know, one of your hands on the bench, taking the other hand, and you're lifting that weight uh, even with your back. You'll hold it briefly, let it back down. You'll do 8 to 12 repetitions, just like that. The pictures are probably the, the best self-explanatory ways of learning these exercises. Uh, these are reverse flies. These are going to work the middle trapezius, help the retractors, help bring the shoulders back. Uh, real, real lightweight I want you to use on here. Uh, you want to keep that angled at like 45 degrees on that bench area. And when you bring it up, uh, you'll bring your arms outwards and just kind of hold it there for a second and come back down. Now, the, you want to make sure you go really light, even if you use a can of beans. If you start out, you may want to, you may not want to use any weight. But the key thing with this, this is not bodybuilding. These are little muscles, and you need to really strengthen them correctly. This is probably the easiest one. You can use a little can, a little two-pound weight in each hand. These are called side raisers. And uh, what we're doing here is that uh, we just want to bring it up to our shoulders, uh, hold it, pause, and come back down. And obviously, whenever we're, we're exerting ourselves, uh, we want to uh, breathe out. In other words, as we exert or whenever we're pushing or lifting, we always want to exert out. We don't want to hold that extra oxygen inside of us that increases pressure within our body. Uh, so going back uh, to this uh, forward head posture uh, that we're talking about uh, and looking at these different images, uh, this uh, 
we really need to be aware of what we're doing here because uh, this is something that's so important. Now, one thing I want to mention, um, fibromyalgia, uh, which was really interesting, see if I can bring that in front of me, but what's really interesting is that people who say they have fibromyalgia, when you have this type of condition, uh, this uh, trapezius myalgia, which is just soreness, pain, cramping. Realize when these muscles cramp and they shorten, you got blood vessels that run through these muscles. So what the muscles are doing is they're squeezing down on those little blood vessels. The, 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 the muscles are not getting all its blood supply, like a heart attack, and it aches and it cramps and it hurts. So what, what do you do? We well, get massaged. The massage is great. Uh, myofascial release, myofascial work, massage work, excellent. Moist heat, excellent. Hot baths, hot showers, Epsom salts. Um, you know, you can do trigger point therapy. You can lean up against something. You can use those little things and you can, you can squeeze it. You can take your own hand and squeeze a trap and hold it and work those trigger points. Uh, but what they found out uh, for people who had fibromyalgia, a lot of these conditions right here, these upper trap myalgia right here, this trapezius myalgia, has been overlapped with that diagnosis because I don't really believe in fibromyalgia. Um, in all the years that I've practiced, and um, let me tell you, um, I've done a lot of radio for many, 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 many years, decades, and I've seen thousands. I mean, maybe, I don't know, 50,000. I don't know how many thousands of people over all these years I've never run into a case of fibromyalgia that couldn't be helped because all fibromyalgia is is just points, many different locations on the back that come up with a diagnosis or a syndrome. But this particular condition right here, when you take care of this trapezius myalgia, these tender points will start to go away. Remember that the, the, the trap muscle, this is very important, that the trap muscle right here, um, look how low it goes down. It goes all the way down to, to the 12th thoracic vertebrae, goes all the way down to the lower thoracic vertebrae, uh, and that covers the whole back. So when people are getting all these different points in there, these are the trap muscles. This is, this is uh, I think it's a crock of junk when people are just giving you a diagnosis or a syndrome that can't help you. Well, start doing these exercises. I really think that you'll, that you'll get great results. Um, you know, this is, is so important. The, when you look at these different conditions, when people have this pain and you, you just look at the forward head posture, you look at the stress you're putting on your body, uh, it should tell you that the best thing, you know how they say out of sight, out of mind? Well, now it's in your mind. Now I showed you what your head looks like. I showed you the damage that could occur. I showed you basically the irritation. These areas affect other areas. That When these traps attach underneath the skull, under here, guess what? Occipital neuralgia. Well, now you got occipital neuralgia. Well, when these, uh, when you're at forward head posture, and look what happens, your head goes down. That means your your chin has to be lifted. The occipitals have to work harder. It affects the TMJ, the master muscles, the pterygoid muscles. It affects up in the in the throat muscles. Um, everything's connected. So um, I'm going to spend uh, another video just talking about primary problems because you know when we have pain, most of these problems are coming from somewhere else. Doesn't always mean it's coming from the site of pain. The body's a, a compensatory machine. So all, all in said, I really hope that you'll, you'll, you get something out of this. I really hope that you will uh, share this video with others. This is really a, a very important video. Uh, it's really helpful, and it's really important that you understand good posture because most degeneration, spondylosis, arthritis, degenerative joint disease, all those conditions like pinched nerves, herniated discs, uh, bulging discs, degenerative, uh, and all those conditions that go along with pinched nerves and pain all come from poor posture. Uh, blessings to all of you. I ask you to subscribe. Uh, check out my channel, uh, Motivational Doc, on Facebook as well. Uh, whatever reviews you can leave me there, I appreciate it. And leave your comments below. You're going to get hundreds and hundreds of people that are going to uh, comment about this particular topic because so many people have it. It's, it's a major epidemic. Anyways, just uh, blessings to everyone out there. Uh, stay well, stay proactive, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.